Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, so till yesterday we had discussed uh, about the female and the male reproductive system. Today we are going to see how each of these reproductive systems form their gamete, the process known as gametogenesis. So this is all under the chapter 5, uh, under the chapter 3, I'm sorry, and under the unit 5. So the chapter 3 is human reproductive system or human reproduction. So I am Janani Saptarishi and uh, I will be teaching class 12 biology uh, and I am associated with Unacademy. Unacademy is India's largest online learning platform. So what you will avail is you will get daily live classes, alright, you will get access to all the live tests and the quizzes conducted by an academy. You will get structured courses with full syllabus coverage. By that I mean you can prepare for any entrance exam at your ease and at your comfort. So by full syllabus coverage I mean that if you are for example you are preparing for your NEET you will get complete access to all the subjects regarding to this exam that is if you have enrolled only from my code, that doesn't mean that you can study only biology. You will get access to chemistry, physics, biology, their live lectures, quizzes, tests and etc. So you will get unlimited access to all this. Everyday live classes, you will be engaged with the top educators on board. So in a situation like this, this is the most preferred thing and we all uh you know will want this that we sit at home and uh you can uh, be on board with the top educators and learn at your pace and comfort so we have a very comprehensive syllabus and see all you have to do is go to the unacademy learning app and download this application once you get it installed get the subscription and once you have subscribed for more information or to connect with us Please download the Telegram application and you have to just copy and click join uh, from this URL. You can find this in the description box below. Uh, so, when you will uh, begin with Hi Harman, Hi Utkarsh. Fine. So, what happens is uh, when you as soon as you get the subscription these are the courses offered to you i recommend you the most the 12 month course Fine. I hope you all can hear me. All right. So I recommend you all the 12 month course because uh, not only because it is very economical. See, it is just 15,000 rupees for 12 months. All right. And but also to prepare for an examination like need you at least need and year in hand. But if you are in class 12, you may go for any of these courses. And now you uh, I'm providing you all an extra offer that this is, is yes. yes so uh, as soon as you use the code that is my name janani j a n a n i so as soon as you will enter this you will avail an additional 10% discount all right on all the courses fine so the 12 month one is now just in 13500 let us start with today's topic that is gametogenesis. Hi Herman, hi Utkarsh, hi HZN. So, first we'll begin with, uh, with the gametogenesis process in that of the male. Alright, so that process is known as spermatogenesis, means the formation of sperms. 
first let us have a broader uh, look at uh, what is gametogenesis so basically gametogenesis as i mentioned is the process of formation of gametes all right so uh, sperms and ova are formed respectively in the male and the female ones all right very important thing to remember is that gametogenesis only take place in the primary sex organs that is the testis and the ovaries all right in both male and the female the gametogenesis process will takes will take place only in the primary sex organs fine now what happens is gametogenesis in male is called spermatogenesis and that in female is called oogenesis let us start with see this is basically the two uh, very important diagrams taken from the ncrt itself once uh, i'll explain you both the processes this diagram will be very clear as you can see that it both of it starts from a mitotis mitotis phase but there is a lot of difference as we move forward and uh, also in the end products in the number and also in the size all right so what happens is that in the testes all right they produce immature male germ cells called the spermatogonia so basically these spermatogonia are first attached in the inner wall fine and then what happens is that uh, uh, they undergo something called as mitotic divisions all right and as soon as they will undergo the mitotic divisions now they have become 2n or they are 46 in number fine now once they have completed their mitotic phase what happens is that only some of them all right mitotic phase complete kiya theek hai abhi kya hota hai usme se only some all right aur sirf kuch hote hain jo न्यूट्रिएंट्स अब्जॉर्ब करते हैं ठीक है एंड जैसे ही ये न्यूट्रिएंट अब्जॉर्ब करते हैं क्या होता है कि वो डेवलप होते हैं प्राइमरी स्पर्माटोसाइट्स में आई होप दिस इज क्लियर इट इज नॉट दैट जितने जिन्होंने भी माइटोटिक डिविजन किया उनमें से सिर्फ कुछ ही होते हैं जो प्राइमरी स्पर्माटोसाइट्स फॉर्म कर सकते हैं और ये कैसे होता है क्योंकि वो न्यूट्रियस को अब्जॉर्ब कर लेते हैं ऑल राइट एंड नाउ दिस primary spermatocyte will undergo a reductional division or the process called as meiosis see now how do we remember that we know that always the gametes are haploid in nature theek hai to yahan pe first step mein hua mitosis jiske wajah se abhi tak hamare paas diploid condition yani ki 46 hi hai to agar gamete banana hai to isko reduction karne ki zarurat hai hame theek hai तो इससे क्या होगा कि ये 46 सिक्स विल नाउ डिवाइड इन टू ट्वेंटी और आई कैन राइट इट एस 22 टू प्लस एक्स वाई ऑल राइट आई होप यू ऑल नो दैट मेल्स हैव अ प्लॉयडी दैट इज 22 टू प्लस एक्स वाई एंड फीमेल्स हैव अ प्लॉयडी ऑफ 22 टू प्लस एक्स एक्स फाइन सो व्हाट हैपेंस इज दैट a primary spermatocyte first it will complete the first meiotic division and will undergo meiosis one that is the reductional one all right reduction yes so now it has made its 23 uh, chromo uh, it has divided into a ploidy of 23 now leading to the formation of two equal sized haploid cells called as secondary spermatocytes so now what has happened is that uh, the primary spermatocytes has divided into two all right and both of them are equal in size along their haploid cells that i told you because it is reduction so now from 46 it has 23 all right and hence they are called as secondary spermatocyte 
fine. Now what happens is that each of the secondary spermatocytes have only 23 chromosomes. Alright, I hope this part is clear. And now what will happen is that these secondary spermatocytes will undergo something known as second mitotic division or the meiosis 2. Please remember that the process of meiosis 2 is simply similar to the mitosis. Alright, so what happens now? Each of them, now we have them two in number and each of them will undergo meiosis 2 and what is the end result? They produce four equal sized haploid spermatids. See, we had two and they will divide into two by meiosis 1. So, two secondary spermatocytes form hua and dono ka abhi ploidy kya hai? Wo hai n, matlab 23 chromosomes each. Abhi ye jo secondary spermatocyte hai, isne undergo kya hum second mitotic division. Ab kya bana? Char equal sized haploid spermatids. Fine? Yes. So, now this process is called as spermiogenesis. So basically what happens is the spermatids are transformed into the spermatozoa. Alright. Spermatids into spermatozoa when they are transformed is called the process is known as the spermiogenesis. You, there are three terms here. Don't get confused. One is the spermiogenesis. Another is the spermiation and the third one is the spermatogenesis. All the three are very different. After spermatogenesis, sperm head, so basically the sperm has three parts, alright? Uh, yes, so basically the sperm has three parts, head, sorry, four parts, head, neck, middle region and tail. So what happens is that now as soon as the spermiogenesis is completed, the sperm he uh, heads are embedded in the Sertoli cells. And finally, they are released from the seminiferous tubules. Now, these sperms need to get out of the testes and move towards the external genitalia or uh, move towards the uh, urethra or the ejaculatory duct. So, what they now these seminiferous tubules will release only when they are mature or the process of the formation is completed. Now, this process of release of the gametes or the uh, sperms from the seminiferous tubules is called as spermiation. Alright, again a very important concept and you need to remember the difference between spermiation, spermatogenesis and what we saw before that is the spermiogenesis. Alright, Spermatogenesis basically will start in the puberty stage, stage that is uh, at a uh, age um, we can say between 10 to 14 years. Fine. And this why does it start? Because it will start when there is an increase in the GnRH or the growth hormones which is secreted from the hypothalamic region not the hypothalamic hormone which, oh yes, it is known as the hypothalamic hormone because it is secreted from the hypothalamus and moreover, what, where it is, the hypothalamus located is in the anterior lobe of the pituitary. Fine, I hope this is clear. And uh, one more thing I want to mention here is that what happens in the process of spermiogenesis is that they will develop something called as the locomotory structures. So, we know that male gamete is motile in nature. And female gamete is immotile and move in the same Motile nature kyu hota hai? Because iska jo tail ya filament hai, isse motion cause ho sakta hai. So, abhi spermiogenesis wale process mein jo hai, basically jo start mein jo spermatos, uh, spermatogonium hai, wo kaafi heavy hoti hai. Thik hai? 
it is very heavy in the beginning but in this process that is the spermiogenesis the cytoplasmic content will reduce all right and once the cytoplasmic content is reduced and it will lead to the development of the locomotory structures or the tail fine and this is how it will help even in the function of the motility of the sperm so now coming back to the hormonal part, uh, part so we are seeing that it is a uh, the spermatogenesis starts at the puberty stage and it is caused due to the releasing of the growth hormones or the gnrh all right so what happens here is that basically uh, this gnrh will act on the adenohypophysis of the pituitary gland that is the anterior lobe and it will stimulate the secretion of two types of gonadotropins that is the lh the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone see so basically what will happen is that first at the age of puberty all right we can see an increase in the gnrh or the growth hormones okay अभी ये कॉज करता है स्पर्मैटोजेनेसिस ठीक है ये कैसे कॉज करता है क्योंकि इसके पास दो हार्मोन्स है एक है एफ और एक है एल ठीक है सो बेसिकली व्हाट हैपेंस इज दैट एल affects the ladic cells all right l and l remember with that and this fsh or the follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the sertoli cells theek hai to jaise ye lh ladic cells ko kya bolte hai affect karta hai to kya hota hai ladic cells ka humne function kya padha tha ki ye secrete karta hai androgens all right एंड ये एंड्रोजेंस बहुत नेसेसरी होता है स्पर्मैटोजेनेसिस के लिए अभी एफ एस एच के इसमें क्या होता है एफ एस एच के इसमें ये जो सर्टोली सेल्स है ये हेल्प करता है हमारे स्पर्म्योजेनेसिस में ये पार्ट क्लियर हुआ और इतना ही नहीं अभी जैसे ही सर्टोली uh, सेल्स का एक और एक इम्पॉर्टेंट फंक्शन होता है कि ये सेक्रीट करते हैं इनहेबिन एंड इनहेबिन क्या करता है इट विल गो एंड कीप अ चेक ऑन एफ एस एच एंड अगर एफ एस एच की वैल्यू बढ़ गई है इनहेबिन उसे रेड्यूस करेगा ठीक है एंड बेसिकली इनहेबिन सॉरी यस एंड इनहेबिन उसे रेड्यूस करेगा तो ये है हमारा कंप्लीट हॉर्मोनल चेन जो फॉलो होता है टोमैटोजेनेसिस में इसे हम अभी एक और बार रिवाइज करेंगे ठीक है एल एच एक्स ऑन दिलेडिक सेल्स रिमेंबर एल एंड एल सो इट इज इजी और राइट एल एच फॉर लेडिक सेल्स एंड वो क्या करता है एंड्रोजेंस को सेक्रीट करेगा एंड एंड्रोजेंस अभी क्या करेगा ये स्टिमुलेट करेगा अ प्रोसेस कॉल्ड एज स्पर्मैटोजेनेसिस अभी एफ एस एच एक्ट करेगा सर्टोली सेल्स में एंड सर्टोली सेल्स क्या करता है कि कुछ इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर्स सेक्रीट करता है विच इज नेसेसरी फॉर स्पर्मियोजेनेसिस ठीक है तो प्लीज रिमेंबर एल एच इज फॉर स्पर्मैटोजेनेसिस एंड एफ एस एच इज फॉर स्पर्मियोजेनेसिस ये सब कॉन्सेप्ट्स काफी क्लियर होने चाहिए एंड ये हार्मोन रिलेटेड क्वेश्चंस अक्सर पूछे जाते हैं नीट में इन मेल्स ये दिस इज जस्ट अ क्वेश्चन फॉर जस्ट यू नो सीइंग दैट हाउ मच आर अंडरस्टूड इन मेल्स स्पर्मैटोजेनेसिस ऑकर्स एट फीटल स्टेज एम्ब्रियोनिक स्टेज प्यूबर्टी बोथ द फीटल एंड द एम्ब्रियोनिक स्टेज 
So the answer is for male, it will occur in puberty. It is for the female that it will start in the fetal stage itself. Now, the number of sperms produced from a single spermatogonial cell is 4 and haploid 4 and diploid 6 and haploid 6 and diploid. Please remember it is See, spermatogonial cells will give rise to gametes and gametes will always be haploid. And we have seen that in the end there is spore production of, uh, of the uh, haploid cells that is the sperm. So, it is spore and haploid. Now, let us see how is the structure or, or how exactly the sperm looks like. So basically, uh, what happens is that this sperm has four parts, head, neck, tail, a uh, head, neck, middle piece and the tail. Alright, so uh, see this is how it is. This part, what you see, the triangular part is the head here, this part, fine. And this what, uh, what is attaching the head and the neck piece together is the neck region. And this is the middle piece where the mitochondrion is present. Inside the head where well, there was nucleus and the acrosome. These two are present inside the head. Then the neck connects it to the middle piece where mitochondria is present. And this mitochondria is basically required for the movement of the tail. Alright. And this tail or the or I mean the entire sperm, this region is covered by a thin layer that is the plasma membrane. So, I hope all the four structures are clear to you. Just a moment. Okay. Herman, Utkarsh. Fine. As I said, a plasma membrane is the one that envelops the whole body. Now, coming to the first part, that is the head. So, uh, we, see, we saw in the diagram that head basically contains an elongated and haploid nucleus. Fine. It will also, uh, in the uh, head, above the nucleus in the cap like, see, so this is the region of the head. All right. We saw something like this. Yehua Mara nucleus. And we saw one more structure here. Alright. Mm. Yes. We saw another structure right here. Alright. In the cap region. Now this is something known as the acrosome. And a uh, and very important point to remember is that the Golgi apparatus that is present previously in the spermatogonial cells, it is that what gives rise to the acrosome. So basically, it uh, the Golgi, Golgi apparatus modifies and gives rise to this acrosome. Fine. Now, it also has two centrioles and uh, before that, see. Why is this acrosome necessary? Because it has uh, many enzymes. Alright. So, this includes protease, phosphate, hyaluronidase, and they help, which basically help in the fertilizer and also, uh, basic, especially this hyaluronidase, this is required for the penetration of the sperm into the ovum. All these enzyme names and the functions are very important. Now, the middle piece basically uh, contains the mitochondria. As we know, mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, they produce energy. Now, but where is this energy used? You see this structure, this is the mitochondria. This energy is used, used for the movement or the locomotion of the sperm and it will help uh, the tail to cause, the, cause a rapid uh, movement that will help in the mobility. 
all right so it will help the sperm to uh, travel through the vaginal tract and help in the fertilization so a human male uh, ejaculates about 200 or 300 to 300 million 200 to 3 million is the sperm count that is uh, ejaculated during one coitus fine what happens is that uh, out of this 2 million to 200 to 300 million at least 60% will have a normal shape the other required shape and the size all right so 40% to aise hi eliminate ho gaya minus ho gaya theek hai kyun kyunki uska shape sahi nahi tha to ye 40% fertilization mein help nahi karega ab is 60% ka bhi 40% ठीक है ये 60 परसेंट का और 40 परसेंट शो करेगा विगरस मोटिलिटी तो यहाँ से 20 परसेंट गया जिसे जो मोटाइल नहीं था ठीक है अभी ये 40 परसेंट में से भी केवल कुछ ही होंगे जो फर्टिलाइजेशन या फिर नॉर्मल फर्टिलिटी कॉज करने में हेल्प करेंगे ठीक है नाउ Sperms are released from the seminiferous tubules and are transported by the accessory ducts. Yes, we have studied this. Now, important point: secretions of the epididymis, vast difference, vesicles, and the prostate are essential for the mature maturation and the motility of these sperms, not the formation. basically all the structure epididymis vas deferens seminal vesicle prostate bulbo urethral everything is only necessary for the maturation and the motility the secretions of which part of the sperm help to enter into the ovum middle piece tail acrosome neck uh agar enter karna hai to sabse pehle jo tip hai wahi ghusega theek hai तो टिप में क्या होता है टिप में होता है एक्रोजोम जो जिसमें होते हैं बहुत सारे एंजाइम्स प्रोटीएस हाइलोर हाइलोरस जो हेल्प करता है उनके पेनिट्रेशन में एंड आल्सो द मूवमेंट नाउ स्टार्टिंग विद द ऊजेनेसिस तो ऊजेनेसिस इज बेसिकली द गैमेटोजेनेसिस प्रोसेस दैट द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द गैमेट्स इन फीमेल ऑल तो बेसिकली ऊट जेनेसिस हमने देखा था कि जो मेल में वो uh, ये जो भी गैमेटोजेनेसिस uh, का प्रोसेस है ये स्टार्ट होता है प्यूबर्टी एज मतलब विद बिटवीन 11 टू 14 इयर्स ऊट जेनेसिस में क्या होता है कि ये एम्ब्रियोनिक डेवलपमेंट में ही ये गैमेट फॉर्म हो जाते हैं मतलब ऊगोनिया जो इमेच्योर गैमेट है दैट इज ऑलरेडी फॉर्म इन द एम्ब्रियोनिक डेवलपमेंट where this is an as it is line taken from the ncrt please remember when a couple of million gamete are formed all right gamete mother cells are formed okay and within each fetal ovary so there are pair that is two ovary and in both of them a couple of million sperms are a uh, uh, million oogonia are formed all right and they will not multiply now all right so as soon uh, as the fetus or the ch- uh, or the female reaches the uh, puberty till then many of them are destroyed so what is remaining is only a very few number for what from what existed in the fetal stage all right so what happens is that these cells are ar- arrested in the pro phase one of the meiosis and they stop their division there and this stage is called the primary oocytes so only in the fetal stage jitne bhi oogonia bane bane uske baad se wo process continue nahi hoga so what happens is that each primary oocyte then gets surrounded by a flattened layer of follicular squamous cells called the primordial follicle all right so you can see this is the primordial follicles and these are uh, surrounded by follicular cells which is known as the squamous cells 
the innermost layer of the uh, granulosa cells is basically attached all right तो ये जो ग्रैनुलोसा का लेयर है वो अटैच हो जाता है जोना पेल्यूसिडा से ठीक है एंड ये बनाता है स्ट्रक्चर कॉल एस कोरोना रेडिएटर वी कैन सी हियर ऑल राइट सो दिस इज बेसिकली द ऑरेंज थिंग व्हाट यू सी हियर इज द ग्रैनुलोसा लेयर एंड दिस द डार्क ऑरेंज रिंग लाइक स्ट्रक्चर व्हाट यू सी इज द जोना पेल्यूसिडा नाउ दीस बोथ फॉर्म द कोरोना रेडिएटर फाइन and inside this is present the uh, ovule or the ova all right i hope this is very clear a large number of these follicles will degenerate from the period of birth to puberty as i told that as soon as the female fetus is born the uh, multiplication or the formation stops all right so abhi jitne banne utne ban gaye बहुत सारे मिलियंस में बनते हैं ठीक है एंड अभी सब तो उसमें से काफी सारे डी जनरेट हो जाते हैं एंड जो बचता है दैट इज ओनली सिक्सटी टू एटी थाउजेंड फॉलिकल्स आर लेफ्ट इन ईच ओवरी फाइन क्लियर नाउ लेटर व्हाट हैपेंस इज दैट द फ्लैट एंड फॉलिकुलर सेल्स ऑल राइट बिकम्स क्यूबॉइडल नेचर so this is the primary follicle now uh, what happens is that they will later become cuboidal and they will start proliferating and they will produce something called as stratified epithelium now what that contains is the membrana granulosa and uh, these are called the granulosa cells this point i hope it is clear uh, see it is very easy to understand now the primary follicles now what happens that later these follicular cells they uh, wo banata hai cuboidal structure theek hai and abhi wo cubo cuboidal uh, structure produce karta hai stratified epithelium aur usko hum kya bolte hain usme hota hai membrana granulosa so just because usme membrana granulosa hai to usse kehte hain uh, granulosa cells fine follicles at this stage develop the primary follicles we have already seen this now what happens a homologous membrane called the zona pellucida that is the glycoprotein layer appears between zona pellucida kiske beech hota hai primary oocyte and granulosa cells ke beech present hoti hai zona pellucida is the membrane derived from the ova theek hai अभी क्या होता है कि जो द इनर मोस्ट लेयर ऑफ द ग्रैनुलोसा सेल्स है वो अटैच होता है जोना पेलोसिडा से एंड ये मिलके बनाता है कोरोना रेडिएटर यस नाउ कम्स दी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट जस्ट लुक एट दिस इज द प्राइमरी फॉलिकल्स नाउ जस्ट लुक एट द सेकेंडरी फॉलिकल यू कैन बेसिकली सी सॉरी you can basically see an empty space or basically a cavity this white thing here all right this part so this cavity appears within the mem uh, membrana granulosa and this will increase the size of the follicle theek hai to ye is cavity ko bolte hai antrium or antrum theek hai to wo kya hota hai ki as a result the wall of the follicle becomes thin but the follicle is increasing in size because usme abhi ek cavity new form hui hai now what happens is that as this follicle expands all right so the surrounding membrane of the granulosa condense hone lagta hai to jaise hi ye cavity badhte jata hai jo bhi wo granulosa cells the wo aapas mein aur zyada chipakte jate hain condense hote jate hain theek hai तो जैसे ही ये कंडेंस हुआ ये बनाता है थीका इंटरना जो इंटरनल रीजन में और थीका एक्सटर्नल जो आउटर रीजन में ठीक है तो आउटसाइड द थीका इंटरनल देर आर सम फाइब्रस टिश्यू कंडेंस टू फॉर्म थीका एक्सटर्नल ऑल राइट सो फर्स्ट वी सॉ दैट देर वो ग्रैनुलोसा सेल्स ग्रैनुलोसा सेल्स 
then we saw that there was a cavity known, known as antrum. ठीक है इस एंट्रम के वजह से क्या हुआ कि ये कंडेंस होना स्टार्ट हो गया तो जैसे ही ये कंडेंस हुआ क्या बना थीका एक्सटर्नल एंड इंटरनल ऑल राइट दिस पार्ट इज क्लियर नाउ वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट अब ये जो थीका एक्सटर्नल और इंटरनल बना अब इसे हम कहेंगे सेकेंडरी फॉलिकल ठीक है तो सेकेंडरी फॉलिकल में देखो ये कैविटी न्यू आई और ये जो ग्रांड सेल से ये सब कंडेंस हो गए तो अब इसे कहते हैं सेकेंडरी फॉलिकल एंड नाउ व्हाट हैपेंस दैट दिस सेकेंडरी फॉलिकल विल लेटर इसके एंड फेज में ये सेक्रीट करता है एक हार्मोन नोन एज ईस्ट्रोजन फाइन at this stage the primary oocyte within the secondary follicle will grow in size and complete the meiosis one so primary oocyte kya karta hai first meiotic division wo undergo karta hai and wo form karta hai secondary oocyte and ye dekho kaise hota hai one large secondary oocyte theek hai isme hoti hai unequal division unlike in that of the males so the division is unequal one large secondary oocyte and along with one small polar body which will later degenerate all right hi priyanshu shekhar granulosa as i said is basically the cells that are present outside all right so uh, कोरोना रेडिएटर जो होता है उसके भी बाहर मतलब जो सेल्स प्रेजेंट होते हैं वो बेसिकली होता है ग्रैनुलोसा सेल्स एंड ग्रैनुलोसा सेल्स से क्या होता है कि ये जैसे ही कंडेंस होगा वो फॉर्म होगा सेकेंडरी ऊसाइड जब सिर्फ ग्रैनुलोसा सेल्स एंड ओवा प्रेजेंट है वो क्या डिविजन ठीक है अभी ये जो बड़ा सा हमने जो सेकेंडरी ऊसाइड देखा था उसमें होगा मियोटिक डिविजन But it will stop at metaphase टू Clear? तो अब देखो क्या होता है Secondary oocyte है और एक first polar body है फिर क्या होता है कि अभी इसमें secondary जब भी meiotic division start होगा तो अगर अगर ये फर्टिलाइज हुआ यह तब की बात है वरना ये मेटाफेज टू में रुक जाएगा तो अगर ये फर्टिलाइज हुआ तो ये वापस एक बड़ा ऊगोनियम बनाएगा एंड एंड रिजल्ट में थ्री स्मॉल पोलर बॉडीज बनेंगे और ये तीनों के तीनों डी जनरेट हो जाते हैं तो ये एक बड़ा ओवम बना और ये है सेकेंडरी पोलर बॉडी टोटल तीन पोलर बॉडी बनते हैं बट ये तभी बनेगा जब भी फर्टिलाइजेशन होगा अगर फर्टिलाइजेशन नहीं हुआ तो ये स्टॉप हो जाएगा कौन से स्टेज में मेटाफेज टू के स्टेज में Fine. Yes. Now what happens is that this secondary follicle will further change into a mature follicle known as the graphene follicle or the tertiary follicle. See, this is the oogonium. It uh, first it will uh, start with the primary oocyte. Ab ye uh, oocyte undergo karega division or banayega one large secondary oocyte and one polar body. तो ये हुआ हमारा मियोसिस वन अभी मियोसिस टू तभी होगा जब भी फर्टिलाइजेशन कंप्लीट हो चुका होगा अगर फर्टिलाइजेशन नहीं हुआ तो क्या होगा ये मेटाफेस टू में रुक जाए ठीक है तो अभी हमने क्या देखा अभी ये फर्टिलाइज होके बनेगा वन लार्ज एक्सेल सी This secondary oocyte when it will divide again, it will produce one large again one polar body and polar body divide करके क्या इसमें तो वैसे भी cytoplasm कम है तो ये तो large egg बना नहीं सकता तो ये polar body वापस से दो polar body को generate करता है ठीक है तो total three polar body बनते हैं please confuse मत होना ये मत लिख देना कि end में दो egg बनेंगे Now let us see what is the ovulation. The release of the ovum 
see now the secondary uh, oocyte what is formed or the secondary follicle will just simply continue to expand and then what will happen is that once it has undergone the meiotic phases it will release its ovum all right so the release of the ovum from the ovary is called the ovulation the graafian follicle is at a is at first very small compared to the thickness of the cortex of the ovary so pehle humne jo dekha tha jo graafian follicle wo bahut thick tha isse yahan pe bahut thick tha but jab ovulation hona tha to dekhiye ye layer kitna thin hai theek hai to so, graafian follicle ka jo layer hai uski thickness jo hai wo kam ho chuki hai now as it enlarges what happens is that it becomes so big that not only it will reach to the surface of the ovary but it will also start a bulging so we can see the size it is quite big and now it will cause bulging so what happens that uh, so ultimately it will call the rupture so ye rupture ho gaya and ovum release ho gaya so this is ovulation so just a quick question in human sorry just a moment ha huh? so in human female the oogonia starts cell division during the embryonic development and stops or gets arrested at the process of it is pro phase 1 of the meiosis 1 during this is we are talking uh, during the embryo or the fetal stage all right so ovulation is releasing of the primary oocyte from the ovary releasing of the secondary oocyte from the ovary releasing of the tertiary oocyte or releasing of the graafian follicle so ovulation is releasing of the secondary oocyte from the ovary now let us study what is the corpus luteum ab ye release ho gaya abhi jo bacha hai us structure ka kya hota hai so basically corpus luteum is after ovulation jo granular cells granulosa cells bach gaye hain wo kya karta hai ki wo proliferate karta hai and a yellow glandular structure banata hai to word glandular se hi hame pata chalta hai ki ye kuch na kuch secretion mein help karega and hum ise corpus luteum isliye kehte hain see corpus is basically because ov ov session release ho chuka hai now this has no life and it is luteum because it is yellow in color fine right? so what happens is that if the ovum is not fertilized then the corpus luteum will persist only for 14 days matlab 14 days ke baad ye menstrual cycle se ye hum hamare uh, uterus se eliminate ho jayega agar fertilize nahi hua to theek hai now During this period, as I told you, it is a glandular structure, so it ha has to secrete something. So what it secretes is progesterone. Again, very important. All right, it secretes progesterone, and what happens at the end of its functional life? It will degenerate and form a mass of fibrous tissue called as corpus albicans. So what we have to remember is that see this corpus luteum, if not fertilized. All right, it will secrete progesterone. वो अपना काम करेगा and फिर वो बना देगा corpus albicans. Now this is white in color. All right, and then it will eventually degenerate. If the ovum is fertilized, अभी हमने देखा अगर fertilized नहीं हुआ तो क्या होता है? तो अगर fertilized हो गया तो क्या होगा? So if it is fertilized, what happens that uh, it the corpus luteum will persist or it will exist for 4 months 4 months ke baad kya hota hai ki placenta formation start ho jata hai see so what happens is that the progesterone secreted by it is essential so ye jo progesterone release karta hai agar fertilize nahi hua to ye progesterone zyada kaam ka nahi hai but once the ova is fertilized so this progesterone plays a very important role and this is essential for the maintenance of the pregnancy only in the first few months or in the first four months what happens after the first four months is that 
the porpoise luteum degenerates and placenta formation will begin and the placenta itself will secrete the progesterone i hope this is clear so moving forward so the series of the changes that begins with the ovulation or the for formation of the ovarian follicle and it will end with the degeneration of the corpus luteum or the corpus uh, albicans so this entire process is known as the ovarian cycle yes coming to this diagram again which we saw in the start so basically the first different difference is that spermatogenesis started, starts at puberty this will start during the fetal life itself all right so now first both of them undergo mitosis different uh, difference and then what happened they form primary spermatocytes they form, form primary oocytes now both will undergo meiotic division in meiotic division here equal and similar look uh, equal uh, or in same size of the haploid are formed here one large oogonia and one small polar body is formed and then this first meiotic division is completed prior to the ovulation another difference all right this is completed somewhere between the birth and the puberty and this is entirely happening in the puberty stage and now again in the second mitotic division what is formed four haploid see we can see four it is all will be in haploid condition uh, and they are four equal in sizes spermatids or the spermatozoans are formed from these spermatids fine this is clear here what happens is that even in the secondary uh, when the secondary oocyte divides one large ovum and the secondary polar body is formed so there is a size difference why is the size difference happening uh, what we need to remember is that uh yes just a moment huh? Yes. So basically, what happens is that the size difference is basically due to uh, because the cytoplasm is getting distributed unequally. That is one of the major reason uh, reason because of the cytoplasm. Now, another uh, reason what we can say is that I'll just read it out as it is given in the book. yes so what happens is that the excess of the cytoplasm is absorbed by the sertoli cell so what happens in the case of sperm what happens is that from here the cytoplasm is absorbed by the sertoli cells theek hai to in sab ka jo size hai wo kam ho jata hai isiliye sperm jo hai wo ovum se kafi chote hote hain theek hai aur they are less in size and another important thing is that during the spermiogenesis equal division of the uh, cytoplasm occurs but here equal division is not occurring as i told earlier but another important point you need to remember that here the cytoplasm is absorbed by the sertoli cells yes now seeing the number as we know uh, in from in the start it is 46 in the first mitotic division it is 23 and in the second mitotic division again it is 23 now we will see something the last topic known as reproductive period so the formation of gametes take place only in, during the reproductive period which will uh, begin at the age of puberty that is from 10 to 14 years so in women the reproductive period ends between 40 and 50 years and the onset of menopause and in man it will extend much longer at the end of the functional life corpus luteum forms a mass of the fibrous tissue called corpus albicans we have seen uh, it for after the corpus luteum is degenerated it forms corpus albicans that is it for today thank you so much for joining in we will meet tomorrow at uh, 11:30 again 11:30 a.m. 
please be there please do like share uh, share the link with more people do like my video and subscribe the same thank you Thank you.